Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Oak Ridge Student Ministries. If you're joining us for the first time, my name is Jeff, and I'm the youth and young adult minister here at OPC. Uh, if you've been here before, well, then you already know that, but I'm still excited that you're here because we're jumping into the second week of our series called Connect the Dots. Last time, which was three weeks ago, we were talking about how we can connect the dots when it comes to our faith so that we can develop a deeper, stronger relationship with God because God wants our faith to grow. So why not figure out how we can connect those dots together? Now, I want to ask you a quick question. When was the last time you made a new friend? Just think about that for a second. Maybe it was when you started school this year or when you became part of a new team. Maybe it was even this week. I don't know about you, but the idea of making a new friend makes me excited because it means that they may bring new interests into my life as well. New friends just have a way of influencing a lot of things about our lives. When I was your age, I was super into skateboarding. And I got into skateboarding because my neighbor was into it. I enjoyed skateboarding, but it seemed like he just lived skateboarding. He was always skating. He got really, really good, really quick. And if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have gotten into it the same. Isn't it true that people just have a way of influencing us way more than we realize? In fact, people can actually play a really important part in helping us to grow in our faith. Think about it. Whenever we hear about someone's journey towards growing in their faith, we usually hear them talk about a relationship. And I don't just mean the relationship part with God. I mean their relationship with other people. That may be true for you too. If you consider yourself a follower of Jesus, it might be a parent or a grandparent or a sibling or a teacher who told you about Jesus for the first time. Even if you're not sure what you believe yet, I bet you can name one person in your life who seems to care a lot about their faith. It might be something about the way they treat other people, the way they act, or the things that they say that seem different to you. There's something about the way they live that makes you wonder why they are the way they are, or even if you could be a little more like them too. No matter what this looks like for you, the chances are good that you're sitting here right now watching this video because of at least one other person in your life. Someone who invited you to join us, or included you, or inspired you. Someone who has encouraged you or made a difference in your life. If that's true for you, here's what I want you to know. The way you ended up here is the way that God planned it. You see, God designed human beings to be in relationship with other people, in families and friendships, on teams, and in small groups. God made us to live, grow, and develop in our faith alongside each other, to influence each other's lives and faith in a positive way. Now, some of you may look around at the people in your life and think, I don't know anyone who's really growing in their faith. How am I supposed to find someone to help me do that? Or maybe you think, I'm still figuring out what I believe. Am I supposed to help someone else do that right now? Either way, this doesn't sound easy. If God wants our faith to grow and other people are supposed to play a part in that, how do we connect the dots between the two? Do we sit around and wait for someone who loves Jesus to come into our lives? Do we have to go out and find somebody else's faith to influence? Are we just supposed to hope and pray that we make the right friends or meet the right group of people? Do we just have to hope that we have a leader who wants to help us? Or is there something more we can do to connect the dots? This is actually a really great thing to start thinking about at your age. Because whether we realize it or not, we have the choice about who we let influence our lives. And just like the right people can help push us in a positive direction towards God, the wrong people can pull us away from a relationship with God. They can pull us in a negative direction. And if God made relationships as something that can help grow our faith, we want to be careful about who we let influence what we believe. So today, we're going to look at some wisdom from a guy named Solomon. Why do we care what he said about all this? Well, for a couple of reasons. First, Solomon was a king. And secondly, 
he was known to be the wisest man who ever lived. Thousands of years ago, when he ruled, Solomon was known for giving really good advice. A lot of this is recorded in the Bible, and it's actually where we're going to find some of his advice on relationships today. So let's take a look at what Proverbs 13 verse 20 says. Walk with the wise and become wise, for a companion of fools suffers harm. It's pretty simple, right? Solomon basically said that we have a choice. We can be the kind of person who spends time with those who are wise, or we can be the kind of person who spends time with fools. Now, understanding these words, wise or wisdom and fool or foolish, is really important because wisdom isn't just about being really smart or knowing a bunch of random facts. A wise person is someone who makes good and healthy decisions. And a fool is just the opposite. There's someone who doesn't always use good judgment and makes decisions that aren't so great. And we get a chance to choose which one of those people we choose to spend our time with and which one we want to be as a result. Honestly, I want to be wise. And I think most of you probably do too. So what do we do to become wise? Well, as Solomon put it, we have the choice who we are going to spend time with who we're going to let influence us. This whole thing meant so much to Solomon that he actually put it another way later on in Proverbs. Here's what he said in Proverbs 27, verse 17. As iron sharpens iron, so a friend sharpens a friend. Solomon was painting a picture. And it was a picture that back then would have made a ton of sense. There were people in his culture who spent a lot of time working with metal like iron. And often they'd use iron against iron to sharpen it, to form it into what they were making it to be. Let me show you what I mean. I love to cook. I'm not very good at it, but I enjoy cooking. And one of the most important tools in any kitchen is a good sharp knife, like this one. You can see that okay. It's a decent sized knife. And the best way to sharpen a metal blade of a knife is to sharpen it against another piece of metal, just like one of these. Now, maybe you've got one, you've got a knife block at home, or you've got one that looks like this. The reason this works is you take metal and metal and you sharpen it. You run it against, let me catch that. You run it against each other and metal, iron, steel, sharpens metal. The same is true with relationships. In the same way, a wise person in your life can help you grow into the person that you were made to be. The right person can encourage you, influence you, support you, or challenge you as you grow in your faith. If we want to connect the dots to help grow our relationship with God, then we need the help of people around us to do it. People can help you grow your faith. God created us to be in relationship with other people to have family members and friends and teammates and coaches and small group leaders to help us grow in our faith and develop a deeper relationship with God, to influence us and keep, to keep learning, keep growing, and keep connecting the dots in the way that will lead to a stronger faith. So my friend who started me into skateboarding, he taught me that if I wanted to get better at skateboarding, I needed to skate with people who were better than I was. That was the best way for me to keep getting better at skateboarding. And skateboarding led me here. Skateboarding led me to church. And church led me to people who helped me to grow in my faith and pushed me forward towards a relationship with Jesus. When I look back, I see how God used people here at OPC to grow that faith. And because people can grow your faith too, you have the opportunity to grow and to know by connecting with people here at church. I think that this can be a really important lesson for you. So because God uses people to help grow our faith, who we spend our time with matters that much more. Our goal should be to surround ourselves with wise people, the kind of people who will sharpen us just the way that Solomon said. Now, you may be thinking, okay, I get that. What do I do now? How can I make sure 
that the right people are actually influencing my life in the right way? Well, I think you can start by doing three pretty simple things. First, identify the people you're already spending time with. Take a look around and see whether the people you're spending time with are making wise decisions, are wise people who are going to push you into a right relationship with God. Secondly, identify the people you know will help you grow. Again, take a look around. Are you spending your time with fools? We'll get to that in a second. If you want to change the way that you see the world, the way that you act in your life, the way you relate to God, you need to identify people who can help you grow, who can push you towards a right relationship with God. And then thirdly, take a step towards a relationship with your wise person. Just start a relationship in a positive direction with someone who you see making wise choices, making good choices that can challenge and help you grow. Take a step towards that relationship. If you don't have anyone in your life like that right now, maybe it's as simple as identifying one person and just saying hi. Now, maybe you're wondering if this means you can't be friends with someone if they get into trouble a lot or if they believe things that are different than you. And let me just be really, really clear here. That's not what it means. Of course you can be friends with people who believe differently than you or think, or act differently. You actually should be. Maybe they need a friend like you to be their wise friend, to show them the way to live a relationship with God. The people in your life who think and act and live differently than you can actually be really good to strengthen your faith because they will, at some point, challenge you on your beliefs. They'll make you think. They'll ask questions that make you stop and ask questions of your own. So, don't just walk away from people in your life because you think they aren't making all the right decisions. Because it turns out, we don't either. This is not an excuse or an opportunity to judge people. It's just an opportunity to see where other people are making wise choices and make them yourself. Because remember, people can grow your faith. Because we all need a little encouragement to connect the dots and grow deeper in our relationship with God. So as we wrap up, I want you to think about this question. Who is one person who influences your life in a positive way? Thanks, guys, and I look forward to seeing you again next week.